Okay, in this video I'm going to introduce chapter number 5 of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics or one of the chapters in the Leaving Cert Applied Mathematics, Mathematics course and it's called Newton's Laws and Connected Particles. Now even if you're not studying Leaving Cert Applied Maths, uh, if you're studying even college physics, what you're about to learn in this chapter is vital and this is all related. Now just to kind of give you a broad outline as to why this is important, interesting and uh, relevant I suppose really, well there are two broad areas in physics. The first area is classical, and the sec second area is modern. All right, just like in music, you have classical music and modern music. Okay, so in modern music, or modern music, <laughs> in modern physics, you will have ideas such as quantum physics. Uh, you you will have what modern thermodynamics. Uh, what else would you have? I don't know. Quantum, okay, well you have relativity. You would have loads of things like that. Alright, now I suppose what, what is mo when did modern physics begin? And I'm going to suggest that it began approximately 1900. And just as an example, Einstein released his papers. He released three papers in, I think it was 1905. One was on special relativity, one was on Brownian motion, and another one, what was his third paper? Um, the photoelectric effect, actually, if, I th if, I, if I'm correct. So we'll say in about 1900, Einstein released these papers, and him and a, a load of other people were introducing this thing called modern physics. And that's when things started to get, uh, uh, as people like me would consider, interesting. However, for a couple of hundred years prior to these guys, we had the, uh, we'll say, the era of classical physics. Now, you might also call classical physics Newtonian physics. Now that's kind of very broad because I suppose that's not really giving it's not really giving due attention to other areas that Newton didn't do. But basically, uh, anything up I will just say very broadly that anything up to 1900 was Newtonian or classical. All right, and it turns out that Newton um, Newton was an unbelievable genius. He uh, he, I suppose he had his finger in every pie. I suppose a story that I, I read was that a man called Kepler, uh, you might just want to find out about him. So Kepler was the man who discovered uh, kind of a law about the rotation of planets around the sun. And uh, basically Kepler went in to Newton in his office in whatever, wherever they studied in the UK and he asked Newton to have a look at, at some notes that he was doing or some calculations or whatever he's doing about the rotation of, this, of the planets around the sun. And then it's said that Newton went into a box or a, you know a, a drawer behind his desk and pulled out all the calculations that Newton had done himself. And Newton had everything just done exactly as Kepler did. The point I'm trying to make is that Kepler, anyway, Kepler's laws of planetary motion became, got him famous, and these they're kind of semi-empirical laws. Whereas and Newton had them done already, and he just filed them away, and he filed them away in his notes and never thought about them again. So, I don't know, I suppose perhaps that shows you that Newton was incredibly smart. And what Newton did was he came up with three laws, which I won't discuss now, but these are the three laws which essentially governed uh, classical physics. And they, they, they were thought to be empirical, or what that means is they were, they were thought to be, um, un well, you couldn't prove them, but that, um, that they, like, nothing, nothing violated these three laws. Okay? <laughs> However, in after 1900, about that we find we found that we were violating the laws of physics. Well, we weren't. We were violating the laws of no Newtonian physics, and uh, it, like the, his his physics was so good that uh, the things you're about to learn in this chapter were these were the physics used for hundreds of years. These are the things that got your automobile, your aircraft, your um, any of those things like that. They uh, they got all those built, and that's what, that's what shows shows you how good these things are. And what you'll be doing is learning the rudiments of this, or all the uh, the very basics of it. You'll be doing things like uh, you'll be doing things like wedges. So if this is a wedge and or an inclined plane, you'll be talking about you know you know bodies falling from them. You'll be doing things like pulleys. So you'll be asked to work out if you have a pulley system like this. You might have two particles on a pulley, and you'll be asked to work out how how they uh, how they operate. You'll be asked to deal with things like snooker balls okay so you have a ball here and a ball here 
and you might be asked well what happens if the two of those collide and all of these things are governed by Newtonian or classical physics so the, like, these are all like you literally would be able to analyze the world around you just by using Newtonian or classical physics which is something you learn in this chapter so like I said this is genuinely genuinely relevant this is uh, you could you could literally run a civilization just on these Newtonian laws and uh, you'd be just fine of course you wouldn't have your iPod but that's beside the point so look that, that I hope that kind of motivates the, the topic so thanks for watching please pass it down to your friends and subscribe to my channel